and convex mirrors. We want to be able to identify examples of concave and convex mirrors and discuss the behavior of light rays when reflected off of curved mirrors. So, plane mirrors, we know that the light must bounce off. We know that plane means flat, quick review. Tell me which one of these is not true about the image formed in a plane mirror? B. Awesome. B. So, is not true. That are behind the mirror. What about the acronym? Get this one. The acronym proper plane is very uptight, so don't stop shouting. What about this one? Which row in the table gives the properties of the image? This image. I have a plane image of P formed in front of the plane mirror. P. E. Awesome. Virtual and laterally inverted. Correct. All right. What about this one? Which diagram shows a possible path of a light ray to each of these right angle prisms? First of all, what is this? What am I making by putting those two prisms together? Periscope. Mm -hmm. And which one of those shows the path, path of the light ray through the periscope? No. D. Final answer? D. No, no, no. I lie. I lie. I lie. I lie. The final answer is B. Get dyslexic. Do not doubt yourself. Mm. You were right the first time. Sometimes I confuse my B's and my D's. Don't confuse the path. That's two completely different paths. So remember, they have to be in the same orientation. You want those surfaces to be parallel. All right. You have your spoon. Yes. Okay. It was, I think it was good. Look in the front of the spoon. So pick a side, whichever side. All right. So that spoon, when you look at it, of course, you see your face. Yeah, you see your reflection, okay? Mirrors can be curved too. There are two types of mirrors, concave and convex. Each side of the spoon represents one of those types of mirrors. So the side that we put the food in represents a concave mirror. And the side, the bottom side, is a convex mirror. Concave mirrors cave in, so they have a sink at the surface, and convex mirrors push out. They have a bulge at the surface. Okay. Cave, concave, cave in, convex, like I'm at, so I push out. Right. All right, so concave mirrors are found in your compact mirror, your makeup mirror. When you go to the dentist and they put that little mirror on a stick in your mouth to see the underside of your teeth, that's a concave mirror. Your headlights, the headlights in the cars, those are always also concave. I know. So what are, what's one special property about concave mirrors that we want to remember? So depending on the type of, depending on object's distance, the 
these images. So take your spoon off again and look on, look in the concave side. Okay, so stretch your arm out like this. No, the one with the spoon in it. Stretch your arm out with the spoon. All right, hold it up. Now, just tell me, what do you see? How's your image? How does the image look? Okay, so how does your image look? And describe it using physics word. Oh. Physics word for upside down. Laterally inverted. No. Inverted. That's inverted, not laterally. Remember, the lateral part means horizontal. Inverted means upside down. Okay, so your image is inverted. Now take the, the spoon and bring it close to your face. Like rest your hand right on your nose and then look in the mirror in the spoon. You know what? You gotta bring it closer than that. Try to look at your eye. No, look. Look at your eye. How does it look? I can't see nothing in the spoon. I need to get a new spoon. Go get a, a spoon that has a polished surface, please. Oh. Now it's just stretched out in skin color. What am I meant to be seeing? All right, so when you put it up to your eye, flip your eyelashes a little bit. I can see my eye. How would you describe the image of your eye? Zoomed in. Oh, no, not zoomed in. No, you're not wrong. So it definitely is a lot bigger. It's magnified and what else? Is it still upside down? No. I have some pretty eyes. It's right side up. It so it's upright. So when the image, when the object is far away from the concave mirror, your image is smaller and upside down, but when, sorry, not smaller, it's upside down, but when you bring it closer, it's right side up. So if we want to talk about, when we talked about plain mirrors, we had nice clear cut rules. The image is always, this distance behind the mirror is always upright. It's always um, the same size. But with curved mirrors, the image properties, it gets a little bit more colorful and we have to take it case by case basis. So the image properties for a concave mirror depend on the object's distance to the mirror. As you saw, we had very different properties when it was close versus when it was far. Okay. Um, this week, I'm gonna give you a simulation so you can see, kind of play around with those image, the object distance and see what type of images would be formed, okay? So for now, what we wanna remember about concave mirrors are that they produce different types of images depending on the object's distance to the mirror. All right, so yes, we did that. Your image has been inverted. Let's talk about convex mirrors now. So the other kind. Recognize these mirrors. Where do you find them? In stores. Yeah. 
So before we had fancy security systems and alarms and laser beams and all of that, we had good old mirrors, curved mirrors, convex mirrors to be exact. And the reason that they help is because what they do, they make the image of the objects a lot smaller. You can see a lot more. You can see a wide space in the view of that mirror. So the objects appear to be smaller than they really are. And that's very helpful, especially in the case of a rear view mirror. So in our cars, we have a driver's side and we have a passenger side. Now on the driver's side, we could use a regular plain mirror because all we have to do is kind of look a couple of centimeters over and we can see back behind us pretty accurately. But if we use a flat mirror on the passenger side, we would get a view kind of like this. We may only be able to see the bumper of the car and from that view i can't tell if that uh tall um garbage truck or trailer or a little you know nissan note so that dangerous because it creates blind spots for drivers so what engineers have done they've utilized convex mirrors as the, um, the mirror on the passenger side. Because we're so much further away, we need to see more on that side in order to get a clear view of what's going on around us. So we use a curved mirror on that side. And if you ever notice, when you sit in the passenger seat, this warning is only on one of the mirrors. It's only on the passenger side because this is a convex mirror and the warning says objects in mirror are closer than they appear. And that's because the convex mirror makes the cars behind you look smaller. And when things appear smaller, we perceive them as being very far away. So this warning tells us to keep in mind and even though they look far away, they can be, you know, right, right behind you. So we have to keep that in mind in order to get the effect. In order to be able to see more, it looks further away. So we give, we get, we gain a wider perspective. But we also have we gain a little bit of risk in thinking that the objects are closer than they actually are. I mean, are further away than they actually are. Okay. So the outside passenger rear view mirrors, this is a long description. Outside passenger rear view mirrors are usually convex mirrors, but the inside, so the one up top in the middle, and the driver's side be plain, as in flat. Okay. So convex mirrors produce images that are smaller and they give a wide field view. So what happens when light strikes a concave mirror? Well, all the light rays, they head towards the mirror in a nice straight line, so they're all parallel. And then when they hit the mirror, of course, they can't go through because the mirror has a opaque reflective um, backing. So it bounces off. And what we see is that all of the light rays appear to meet up at one point in front of the mirror. And we call that point principal focus, or you might see focal point in some textbooks as well. Focal point. So 
So the rays are reflected and then they converge, which means to meet up at a point in front of the mirror called the principal focus. So if they meet up at a point in front, what kind of image do you think is going to be formed? Exactly. Okay. Real image. And this distance right here from the mirror to the focal point is called the focal length. And that's a property that's unique for every mirror. The focal point is where they all meet up or where all the light rays intersect. And the focal length is the distance from the focal point to the center of the mirror. Convex mirrors. They do the opposite. So instead of meeting up at a point after they've been reflected, what we observe is that all of the light rays, they spread out or diverge. So diverge means to spread out. And if we trace the rays back, they all seem to be coming from a common point behind the mirror. And that's the focal point for this type of mirror, for the convex mirror. So the rays are reflected and then they diverge, seemingly branch off from a point behind the mirror. Okay. So what type of image do you think is going to be formed from a convex? Mirror. Virtual. Sure. Exactly. Virtual image. Okay. And again, the focal length is the distance from the focal point to the center of the mirror. All right, so question. Convex mirrors are commonly used in everyday life. Which row describes a convex mirror? Convex means convex means virtual image. Diverges by versus the Y field. So See if you are right. You are <laughs> awesome. What about this one? Which list correctly shows the type of mirror and the image produced by a security mirror, which enables shop assistants to see large areas? of the shop at one time. Your head was blocking my question. Wait, wait, wait. Convex is the big out. It's Z. Final answer? No. It's C because convex means is a virtual C. Final answer. Yes. You bet your life on it. Ah, uh, I'll, I'll bet my life on anything. If I make the bag, I'm like, wow, what do you do about it? <laughs> You're correct. It's C. All right. So, shop mirror, that's the convex mirror we're talking about again. 
Spanish meaning smaller and virtual meaning image formed behind the mirror. Good job. All right, so I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. This is a lens now. So the path of light is a little bit um, different, but if you know what the word converge means, so I'm giving you a hint already, you should be able to tell me which one of these lines show the path of a light ray going through of a light ray that has a focal length of CF. A, B, C, or D. Final answer? Yes. Confident now. C is a, pa a parallel line, so if there's multiple C's, they would never converge. Mm -hmm. C is converge when you think of a going from C is on its own wavelength. Yeah, so the rest of these are quite a lot of garbage. But what you're looking for is that it meets or passes through the focal point. Yes. That's how you know it converged. Try this one. So we have another converging lens. What is the focal length of this lens? Are you sure? Locate no. your focal point. No, no, it's not. And identify your focal length. It's not D, it's C. It's 5 plus 4.6, which is 9.6, which is C. And I'll say, um, show me where the focal length the focal point is. There. Good. Now draw the focal length. Draw a line for the focal length. Where? That's the object. That's not the light ray, that's the object. And the light rays are coming from the object. Yeah, so the answer is these are the light rays coming from the object. We use an arrow to represent the object and an arrow to represent the image. This is the image. That arrow. Object equals arrow. And as you can see, the image is upside down in this case. So yes, how are you guys circling my answers? It's correct. Okay. All right. So this, we did this rather quickly. I think I'm gonna go on to lens lenses. We have not been talking for an hour. We've been talking for like, I mean, we've been on for now, but the text of the We've been talking for like 30 minutes. So we can do lenses too. So important vocabulary, principal focus, AKA focal point. Focus on me. 
is the point where a beam of light appears to converge or, or, or diverge after reflection. You know, I've taught this lesson twice and none of my students have pointed out that that says of or I mean, and we need to know what focal length is. And that's the distance from the focal point to the mirror or lens. We're going to talk about it in a minute. All right. So, assignments. So, another worksheet similar to what? just gave you. I need to share the document. I don't know how to do that. Let me see. This is not the whole thing. That's just a snapshot of it. Focal length is the distance between the focal point. And I'm just going to send it on WhatsApp because I don't know how to send documents on this thing as yet. I have not seen that feature. I only know how to share documents. I'll just send that to you on WhatsApp or email it. All right, I'm switching PowerPoint because we're going to go on to lenses now. What's you writing by? I was answering the question. The focal length is um, you think we're still these examinations. According to the information that I have, the only thing that has been moved is the IGCSE, whatever that is, the BGCSE and BJCs are still on and popping tentatively. Popping when the group is supposed to be happening? Um, I don't know. We have a, what time is it? We have a press conference at five o'clock. Still on. Still too long. All right. So lenses is not too long either. Let's go. Differentiate exactly. Lens. Identify examples. And discuss the behavior of light rays when they pass through a curved lens. So. Recall, mirrors can be curved too. There are two types of curved mirrors. They are which side of the spoon is concave and which side is convex? This inside spoon where the food goes is concave. The outside is convex. You have excellent short-term memory. What are lenses? Lenses are oh. optical devices used for light focus or disperse light beam by means of refraction. Right. So, major difference between mirrors and lens. So, with mirrors, we're talking reflection, they bounce off. But lenses, they go straight through. Mm -hmm. So, we're having a change in medium. And so, the light bends instead of bounces off the surface. It bends when it passes through, and that's refraction. And of course, all lenses, the light, in order for the light to be able to pass through, it has to be what? Transparent. Awesome. Transparent. Look at me writing in some semblance of cursive. Sire, what's class? 
All right, so lenses are curved too. And they have the same namesake. So we have two types of lenses, concave lenses and convex lenses. Convex lenses push out, just like convex mirrors. And concave lenses cave in. So we're talking about their surface, the surface of the lens. So convex lens push out. Concave lens push in. Push in at the surface. So so far, we've done nothing but replace the word mirror with lens. Everything is the same. It's not going to stay the same, though. Dun, dun, dun. So, if we compare convex lens and concave lens side by side, just looking at them, we talk about the shape. Convex lens are always thicker at the center than at the edges. Okay. So, Center, edges. Thicker at the center, thinner at the edges. Con so this one looks like somebody who's been in quarantine too long and been eating too much bread. They have a big pot belly. I just decapitated them. Fine. They'll survive. I think that's a woman. Let's go with that. So she has a big pot belly. She seems pregnant. On cave lenses. So that's the shape we want. Mm. Glass. That look like an hourglass. Mm, no. So it has a nice thin center. And it's thick at the top, thick at the bottom. I should be promoting positive body images. Probably. Yeah. Gosh. So. I find it easier to just remember what the surface looks like and compare it to, to mirrors. So convex lenses at the surface, it's like a convex mirror, and concave at the surface, it's like a concave mirror. We can talk about the focal point. We can compare a focal point. Convex lenses actually have the opposite. So for a mirror, we know it would have a virtual focus, but for a lens, it has a real focus, okay? So this is where everything flips. Okay, so other than their shape, everything else is opposite. So convex lenses do not diverge, they converge, and concave lenses do not converge, they diverge. So, focal point would be, and we, we don't have a behind and in front of the mirror, per se, but we can talk about it in terms of the side that the light is entering on, entering, okay? That can be our, that's our reference point. So, for the convex lens, the focus is on the opposite side as the incident rays. So these, the ones that are going in, these are incident rays. Incident rays. So for the convex lens, the focus is on the opposite side of the incident rays. And for the concave lens, it's on the same side, okay? Because they branch off seemingly from a point on this side of the lens. They come from that point. They seem to come from that point. OK. 
Okay, let's clear all of this. I'm gonna show you another diagram side by side with the mirrors so we can see that it's opposite. In a minute. All right, uses. So uses of convex lens, magnifying glass and microscope. So they obviously make things what? Bigger. Much, much bigger, as opposed to concave lens, which make things what? Small. Yeah. That's why when you look through the peephole, you can see the person's entire face and not just a big scary eye coming at you because we use a concave lens. That is correct. All right, so convex makes things bigger, concave makes things smaller. And there are a lot, there's a lot more like, image properties depending on where the object is for, the, for these types of lens as well another topic all right so the effect of the light rays is the opposite of what happens with mirrors so convex mirrors diverge but convex lenses converge so they pass through the lens they bend and they all meet up together at a point on the other side Concave mirrors converge, but concave lenses diverge. Okay, so they pass through the thin center and spread out. Make sense? Yep. You're having fun with this annotation. I don't know how to make it stop. I really don't. I'm not turn it off. That's my check mark. I said yes. Check marks are red. No green is for good. See? Uh -huh. All right. So the focal length again is the distance from the center of the lens to the point where the rays converge or diverge. So for the convex lens, that would be and there, and there. Right here. Yep. Right here. Okay. Center of the lens. Center of the lens. Okay. Focal point. Focal point. Check mark sign is for those lines. Check mark. Watch this. That's Give a check. A line. That's the check mark feature that I just used. Let's see no check mark feature. Where you find that? In the shapes. I don't see shape. Where has it? Line, single arrowhead, and double arrowhead. Under that, where they have to put you on the square. How come mine look like this? Because you're just tapping it. You have to hold and drag it. You just uh, make it man, super size. It ain't, it ain't supposed to be like that. That's not a check mark. That's a very exaggerated. Big ideas require a big collection. All right, look at this question. In one of these diagrams is the distance P, the focal length of the lens. Mm -hmm. Smart. Okay, let's go. Let's go about this smart, right? Smart this one. What kind of lens is this, by the way? Convex.
Okay, let's identify the focal point first. That's the focal point. That's the focal point. That's the focal point. Actually, that might not be the focal point. That's how we don't say the focal point. That's the focal point. So this is supposed to be. Is it? Look at those arrows. It's where the light rays meet up. This? So the answer is the one and only one that I had eliminated. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, I got this, I got this. This is the focal point. This one's wrong. This is the focal point. That has a slight possibility of being wrong. This is the center. That's the center. That's where these rings are meeting. So it could be P. That could be P. I think the answer goes for more than central. Because these are diverging. Diverging. These ones are converging. I think the answer is C or D. Multiple choice, not multiple answer. Pick one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with C. That's a C if you're right. So if Correct. Is the correct answer because see how to do it with the rest of these. These light waves are not even parallel. Light waves have to be parallel. Oh yeah, yeah. I you, I pick C because this part here was darker. I think that's just a random occurrence. I don't think that was supposed to tell you anything. It's just bad copying. Because D, like that, I don't think they meet at that point. I think I just we just assume that they meet. Sure, let's go with that. All right. Let me see. I think I'm. I I did. This one. Which what's the focal of this lens? Stuff. Awesome sauce. Maybe tell me about sound. He's busy, right? Yes. All right. So, more assignments. Fun, fun, fun. I'm gonna open. <laughs> I'm gonna open the simulation that I want you to do. All right. So you can ignore the second assignment. That's just for my class. But I want you to do the simulation. Okay. So you don't have to do this. Don't do that. We're gonna do this. And let's just consider all of your assignments due the day before class. I'm still at 11. Yeah. Well, maybe not 11 59 p.m. because I'm sure I'll be asleep. I want to look at it. I mean, it doesn't matter. I guess I could look at it Thursday morning before I sleep. I'm going to open this simulation so I can show you what I want you to do. So you don't really, you don't really need to write up, like write a one page summary, like formally. I just want you to explore the simulation, just have some fun with it. And then we can talk about 
what you learn from it when I see you. All right, I'm opening it so you can see what it looks like. Okay, we need flash. So, but I'm sure you can do that flash. Not super fancy, but it gives us a good um, visualization of how the image properties change when you change the object distance. All right, so those these yellow dots and crosses those represent the focal point. We usually, when we talk about the object distance or the image distance, we talk about it in terms of the focal point. So we say in front of the focal, um, beyond the focal point, in front of the focal point, between the focal point and the mirror, at the focal point, so on and so forth. So how do they assign a focal point? <laughs> the image is moving. How do they assign the same focal point? Say it again. How do they sell the same focal point if the image is moving? The focal point is a property of the mirror. So that doesn't change. But we can move the we move the object reference to that point. So the focal point is a fixed point. That depends on the mirror. So I'm trying to get a good angle, but you can see. The closer I get, my image is very, very large. The further I get, it gets smaller, and it's also in the opposite orientation. If I put it at the focal point, you can also change the, curve, um, the curvature, and as you can see, that changes what? When I'm changing the curvature, I'm changing the what? It's moving. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to let you figure out all the other stuff. Change the refractive index, change the diameter, put in more rays. Those are the parallel rays there. Put in a lot of rays, put in a second point, so on and so forth. Okay. Show the image, show a screen, what will happen. You got a ruler. You can measure and see what the focal point is, what the object distance is, and all of that good stuff. Okay. So that's what I want you to do. Let me copy the link here. I'm going to give you the PowerPoint too, but let me send all of that to you while I'm still here on the computer. Oops. As you doodle. I was not, I was trying to do it. Stop. Okay, I'm opening up this thing. All right, I'm going to stop. Sharing the screen so I could open up the chat. Send you the link. Say it again. Which one levitates the common wall? Um, not exactly. This is literally like on a thumbtack or something. Just the little stand that come with it. Always knocking this down behind me. I don't know why. I used to put it there because I just knock it down, but you can see like picking it up off the floor. We need a more permanent solution to that though. The phone? Yeah, to put the phone on. I don't know. People just put it on the table. You don't have any space on our table where the TV goes. I'm not moving the TV for the phone. 
Nobody calls us though. We don't use that phone. That's what I got it for to call my mommy a free fought, but then Hurricane Dorian happened and I haven't gotten their phone back yet. Document. I'm sending you two PowerPoints. And what did you say? Um, well, I'm sending you a PDF technically. So, okay, that's both. There's mirrors, pair of lenses, and then I'm sending you. It's just easier for me to send things on this on WhatsApp. You don't have no issues um, getting it on your computer like this, right? No, I just said that. Whatever that means. I don't have air drop. Curve. Mirrors. Worksheet. Did I have a pair of lenses work? No, I did not. Well, that's it. The simulation is what I spoke Perfect. All right. There it is. Okay. You're all set. Have any questions? I have any questions. Why can't concave lens convex Don't forget the spoon. Visualize the spoon so you don't remember. The only way I remember is the spoon. A couple of my students say, can we take a spoon into the exam? I'm like, I don't see why not. I would. I need to remember. All right. I would. Why not? I just need to remember which side is which. Okay. I'm going to go listen to the press conference. Press conference. I shall see you. Same time, same place. Next week. Enjoy free port for the both of us while I'm stuck over here. I think free port of more cases than NASA. NASA has four. Free port only has two that I know that I've heard. But I'm going to see what they're saying now. All right. Do you have any more? All right. Bye. See you next week. Stay safe and sanitized. That's right. I'm going to go to bed. Later.